Mr. Holmes, your brother sent me. Oh, terrific. Let me guess. A mission of global importance, a nation forever in my debt? <laughs> Let's get this over with. Hmm. Huh. I see the Holmes demeanor is genetic. Well then, this island is home to a seemingly innocuous astronomy professor named Jacob Haring. In high society, though, he's rather more infamous. He possesses a collection of scandalous materials that could compromise almost every aristocrat in Britain. And Haring recently got his hands on information that would expose one of our men. He agreed to return it, so long as he was paid a visit by a Holmes. And Mycroft was too busy watching the crown jewels? Fine. I'll visit Mr. Haring the moment I can spare the time. Just wait. The man is a loner, but a cunning one. This invitation implies he has something in mind for you. So be careful. And remember, I was never here. Boom, Sheriff. I found a corpse. Don't you think it's strange we always end up in situations like this? Seek, and you shall find. John, do you know any songbirds? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, partridges, birds of paradise, uh, chickens. Uh... Okay, I, I might just be hungry. It would not be easy to cut this hat in two. Whoever is responsible is a master of their craft. Pheasant feathers. They're rare here. Judging by his expression, a painful and unexpected death. Pattern 1796 Light Cavalry Sabre. His hand is clinging to his chest, but he has no stab or gunshot wounds. It looks like he died of natural causes, but something doesn't add up.
one presumes that empty safes are not some hip new trend. A safe behind a painting. Classic. This was opened carefully. If you had an enormous collection of blackmail material, where would you keep it? Oh, <laughs> nice try, Sherry. But I ain't telling you nothing. Bold, but still deadly. Hmm. Two sabers used to be mounted here. hands aren't moving. So, the victim is Professor Jacob Haring himself. That's no great surprise. London Fencing Club, 1876. A man with a plan. Admittedly, not a great plan if you write on paper exactly when you will do your illegal business, but a plan nonetheless. Stamped with Mr. Haring's personal seal. <laughs> Completely healthy and ready to take part in the fencing competition. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Mr. Haring was not one to deviate from his plans, and yet... They entered the house between 3.30 and 4 p.m. That's exactly when Haring would be checking his blackmail collection. When Jacob saw the intruder, his fencing reflexes kicked in. He lunged left to the sabers, wrenched one off the wall, and attacked the visitor. But in the middle of the assault, Mr. Haring is struck by a heart attack, and the professor only manages to cut off the hat of the intruder. The visitor stole Haring's entire blackmail collection and wrote a message on the blackboard. Before we go chasing the intruder, should we try to confirm the cause of the professor's death? I'd hate for him to be a red Haring. Half empty, or for John, half full. Totally empty. Even John couldn't argue with that. A strong, rotten smell. Uncharacteristic for tea.
Digitalis is usually used to cure heart disease, but every drug is a poison if you get the dosage wrong. Or right, if that's your goal. Seems like we have fun neighbours, eh, Sherry? We should introduce ourselves. He doesn't have an invitation to the club. Get him, boys! Come 
can overcome the brute now. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Hey, you could have kept him alive. It's all yours. No, you killed him. to knock this guy out. I thought we were against murder. We can overcome the brute now. Hey, you could have kept him alive. I thought we were against murder. Fella, I give up. Take me into custody. You have nothing on me anyway. So I'll walk out the station right after you do. Excellent job catching this crook, sir. His name is Lucky Jewel, and as it happens, someone with influence was after him too. You did them a favor. I just solved the mystery, officer. If a criminal appears in my path, it merely affirms my deductions are sound. Either way, you'll be pleased to know that an anonymous tip has fingered Lucky Joe as being involved in the murder of a famous professor. We have photographs and witness statements. Not so Lucky Joe is headed straight to the gallows. Someone served him to us on a silver platter. Interesting. Well, as a vital ally in the arrest of a wanted murderer, you couldn't possibly object to me interviewing him. Well, vital. Y yes, I... No, of, of course. Uh, go ahead. You, haven't you made my day bad enough? Get out! The police received an anonymous tip. Someone saw you entering Professor Jacob Haring's house. They have photos. You're in trouble. <laughs> I didn't even touch the old fool. This old business was a setup from the beginning. You broke into the house at the exact time Jacob Haring had his safe open and his collection of blackmail materials out. Perfect timing to steal the lot. Ah, <laughs> that's circumstantial at best. Alas, the professor turned out to be less feeble than you expected. He pulled a saber from the wall and nearly took your head off. But lo, the vigor evaporated, and all at once he fell to the floor, grasping his chest as if his heart itself had given up. That's... that's exactly what happened. And that's why I'll be out of this reeking cell by morning, once the coroner has done his business. Hmm, unlikely. You claim somebody set you up. If so, they will ensure that you're hanged. We both want to know who is truly behind this, so tell me the whole story. It may yet save your life. Oh. <sighs> Blast. All right, what do you want to know? Haring's blackmail collection was hardly public knowledge. It stands to reason that whoever informed you of his existence must be who set you up. Yes, obviously. But I've never seen his face, nor do I know his name. I received a note at El Palazzo de Luso that gave me the address of Jacob Haring. It was signed with one letter, M. I cannot believe such an established gang leader would personally engage in burglary simply because he received a letter. It was not just a letter. I received something else with the note. A file. On me. And a bloody detailed one at that. I'm not sure if it was from Haring's own collection, but it contained things that could bury me and the entire damn Robins. I burned the file in a heartbeat, but the note warned of others like it in Haring's safe. I needed to retrieve them and got lucky. Lucky? Why? The note said that by being there at a very precise time, I'd find that safe opened. And it was right. So you broke into Professor Haring's study and stole the blackmail materials. What did you do with them? Do you like jokes? My humour tends toward the dry and bitter. Then you will love this one. 
As I fled Haring's place with the documents, a pickpocket snatched the folder from me on the street. I was played from the beginning, beaten at my own game. They made a joke of me and the Robins, and now I await the gallows. Ha! Ha ha ha! Oh, you're right, it was a good joke. But now things begin to make sense. Fear not, Joe. I will prove you didn't kill Professor Haring. What? Then you better do it fast. Per his schedule, Professor Haring had tea with a guest not long before you arrived. The tea in Haring's teapot was dosed with digitalis. A large dose of such a drug, coupled with physical exertion, can cause cardiac arrest. So if the old man hadn't attacked me? He may have lived, yes. But it wasn't you who killed him. The real murderer is the one that poisoned the professor and set you up. I'll make sure the police know it. Yeah, you may save my bacon. Oh, I wouldn't sing a victory song just yet. I believe they're preparing for a conversation with you on many subjects, like the Robins. <laughs> I can handle those fools. I thought you were the copper's pet. But you have character those bloodthirsty mongrels lack. I respect that. Make no mistake, Joe, we are not friends. Should we meet again under different circumstances? Well, you know my character. This area is restricted. Would you like to report a crime? Oh. Lucky Joe is just behind this door, waiting. Hey you, mutton shunter. Come up here. Come on, is it bring your idiot to work day at the station? <laughs> we have serious business to discuss. So much work, so little time. Hey you, mutton shunter. Come up here. Come on, is it bring your idiot to work day at the station? <laughs> we have serious business to discuss. Sherlock Holmes, your brother Mycroft sent his regards. Oh, how touching. Perhaps one day he'll do it in person. Look, I just tell you what they tell me. And you've done it admirably. Good show. 
I'm confident that with a bit of effort, one day you might even send regards to the king himself. Goodbye. Wait. No. I haven't told you yet. Of course. Let me guess. Mission, urgent, fate of the nation, etc. Mycroft busy with his tea parties, is he? Right. So, one of our agents has been involved in an accident and can't send us the confidential document she's obtained. We need you to go and ensure the job is completed. So, yes, urgent mission, fate of the nation. So, Mycroft needs another errand boy. And you are presumably too incompetent? Oh, don't give me that look. I'll go and check on your agent. Send Mycroft my regards. The details are in this note, Mr. Holmes. If I were you, I'd start to take this more seriously. Lives are at stake. Nothing ever changes. I'm pulled back and forth between my brother and brothers playing all their silly games. Hey, at least mine are fun. Sir, what do you think you're doing? Officer. Oh, I know you. You're the clever chap that cracked that Palazzo del Luzzo case, eh? Well, presuming there has not been another murder since, then yes, it is I. I'm here to investigate the accident. You don't mind if I examine the scene? You're too late. Case closed. It was no accident. The rickshaw driver deliberately ran that poor woman over, and I'm taking him into custody. Oh, well, if that's the case, then my examination of the scene can hardly interfere with your brilliant work, Officer Huxley. Well, if you want to play detective, go ahead. But stay away from my business, all right? An impact to the back of the head caused severe damage. Her death was probably instant. Cordona's true horror revealed. Behold, the killer curb. <laughs> it takes two to tango. I'll find a use for it. This pendant looks like it may contain something. Let's see. The dress looks generally neat and tidy. Any staining must have been from the accident. Cleaning the houses of rich men by day and preserving England's secrets by night. My friend, you know you're in trouble, right? But all this can go away for a small fee. Oh, damn crooked cops. Come on, concentrate so we can stop him before he arrests the driver. Always take care when walking beneath balconies. I didn't see her, I swear. She came out of nowhere. I heard someone collide with my car, but when I turned around, she was lying there dead.
From the position of the body, we can deduce that Mycroft's agent walked down the street from the east. The rickshaw's tracks show that the vehicle was coming from the south. The rickshaw gained speed down the slope of the road and was going too fast to stop for a pedestrian. But, Sherry, it would be impossible to miss a rickshaw speeding downhill. It was as fast as a racehorse. Unless something distracts you. A sudden loud noise caught the agent's attention and they stepped into the road without looking. It was all an accident. John, no one is immune to chance. Such synchrony of events would be very difficult to contrive artificially. No such thing as coincidence. I bet there's a killer mastermind behind this. Or a team of killers. Ooh, a secret global rickshaw conspiracy. I've brought such tragedy to my... Upon examination of the scene, I have concluded that the smash of the flower pot distracted the woman. She didn't notice the oncoming rickshaw. After stepping into its path, she was knocked to the ground and died after hitting her head on the curb. It was most likely an accident. Oh, that's just your imagination. The facts say otherwise. Well, fact, there are no wheel tracks on the woman's body, so the rickshaw could not have run over her. Fact. You are blackmailing an innocent man. Didn't I tell you to stay out of my business? You're lucky there's a crowd. So the man can go free. Oh, thank you, Officer Huxley, for your excellent decision. All right. The rickshaw puller can leave, but he better not show his face again. That goes twice for you, Mr. White Knight. Goodbye, sir. I'm glad you didn't leave that poor chap alone. The truth must be told even if it damns as often as it saves. Today it spared a driver and denounced an officer. Tomorrow, perhaps the opposite. One bed, one table, and one horrible scent of decay which someone tried to cover with perfume. A typical safe house for my cross spies. Fake passports. I guess nothing is a crime if you're working for the Crown. Reminds me of the mess in your room, John. I've always wanted to try something new. Being a secret agent isn't easy. The documents may have been stowed in here, but they're gone now. Whoever broke in clearly does not appreciate lockpicks. I must say, perfectly maintained. She took good care of it. 
A brand new model. The wax is still warm. Primitive, but efficient at breaking windows. A brute force intrusion rather than a stealthy sneak in. Sloppy work, unprofessional. Someone was in a hurry. Mycroft's documents were stolen. The thief entered through the broken window not long ago. What are we waiting for? Let's search the backyard and track him down. They were in such a hurry that they cut themselves. They injured themselves pretty seriously. Look at the amount of blood. Does it mean they were waiting here for something? The police patrol schedule sends officers along here regularly. Our thief wasn't waiting. They were hiding. The blood trail stops here. They must have finally bandaged the wound. The thief must be somewhere around here. I can almost smell him. Oh, men are always in a hurry, and women always pay the consequences. Piece of advice. Next time you try to steal from an agent of the United Kingdom, don't leave a trail of blood behind you. Try using a lockpick. So it seems this is it. You found me. And now I have no choice. No choice at all. He told me to give you this letter. So where are the documents? And who is he? Huh. Piece of advice. When someone tells you to mind your own business, listen. Oh, Sherry. What horror could he have been facing that suicide was the better option? It's a grim augury indeed. There's something bigger brewing, John. We should inspect the pool. What did you get yourself into? <sighs> he managed to bandage the wound properly. 
a strange act of self-preservation for a man on his way to suicide. Expensive clothes. Pretty worn out, though. A family insignia. Typical nobleman fashion. Old and made of silver. Not expensive, but might be an heirloom. Take a photo of this poor bugger. Better to give Mycroft something rather than nothing. I suppose it may help in understanding the situation. May I ask you something? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Alas, that's a terrible blow for the office. I'd better pass on your report immediately. Thank you for your service. The accident doesn't look so accidental anymore. 
does it? I think you might be right, John. I feel like someone is leading us by the nose. First time I've encountered such a devious mind. I suspect not the last. Is that you, Mr. Holmes? Please, come in. Now that the police have finished their investigation, Il Palazzo del Lusso has finally reopened. How can I help you, sir? Good day. I'm looking for room 227. An acquaintance of mine has invited me to visit him. Oh, Mr. Holmes, what a delight to see you again. Professor Malice told me he was expecting someone, but I didn't know it would be you. 227 is upstairs and to the left. He said you should spare him the trouble and let yourself in. Here's the key. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to see you. Professor Malice, yes. Yes, of course. Well, I'd best not keep him waiting, thank you. Sherry, this feels awfully like someone has set a mouse trap and we're walking right into it. I have it under control, John. Really, Sherry, I don't like this. Please. See? Neither a trap door nor a self firing gun. Clean champagne flute. The first move has been made. Anglo Egyptian war looms. The champagne bottle is uncorked, yet still chilled and bubbly. The gall of this man. Someone's celebrating a victory, and I'm not sure it's us. <sighs> M is celebrating and wants us to know it. Jacob Haring, just a pawn in a complex chess match. Mycroft's agent. So M did orchestrate her accident with unimaginable precision. The position of naval forces in the Mediterranean this M has his sights set on bigger things. A marked map of Cordona. We visited most of these locations recently. All these thefts, exactions and deaths are the intricately entwined pieces of a greater plan and we fail to influence it in the slightest. Nelson's Monument in Trafalgar Square, London. I am watching you. The hairs on my neck just stood up. What did it say, Sherry? That I failed, John. He's gone, tore through Cordona like a hurricane and left us to sift through the wreckage. Extensive handwritten notes on Sirius B. It appears M was studying up. A dossier on General Garnet Walsley, but now empty. 
I recognize this seal from Jacob Herring's mail. He left behind only what he wanted us to find infuriating. Family photo of the man who jumped off the bridge. Pity. Everybody has pressure points. What would happen if I pushed yours? How many more dossiers like this does M possess? <laughs> Mysteries of Sirius B by Jacob Haring. Used, then discarded. Like everyone in his path. These people were not colleagues or co-conspirators, they were just implements M used to get what he wanted. We're too late, Sherry. M set this all up for us, knowing by the time we found it, he would already have left Cordona. No, no, there must be something I've missed. We can still catch him. There's nothing else here. It's over. You read his letter. He laid out this makeshift museum to taunt you. Don't give him the satisfaction. I will not cede defeat. I will treat this threat with the seriousness it deserves, which is to say, my absolute attention. Then you were giving him the win, Sherlock. Have you considered you might be out of your depth? He was sitting here, in this very room, spinning his web around Cordona and beyond. Manipulating and murdering people, using the Mediterranean as his playground like some sodding Napoleon of crime. Are you trying to suggest? I am not suggesting. I am stating outright that he is toying with you and you are too arrogant to avoid the bait. Sherlock, we stumbled into the lion's den. Now we must slow down. Be smart and make sure we get to walk out alive. When a fly gets caught in a spider's web, it twitches. But the more it does so, the more it traps itself. You are twitching too much, John. Do not mistake my rage for recklessness. Do not mistake disappointment for desperation. The spider does not yet know what it caught. He knows full well. The man makes no mistakes, Sherlock. Incorrect. He just made one. He caught my attention. That's what I'm saying. You are behaving exactly how I'd expect. He wants you to come after him. He knows you can't resist the game. You need to face the facts. You lost. You were outwitted and he got away. Don't fall for it again. The smartest thing we can do now is lick our wounds and tell Mycroft everything. Mycroft, now you really are being hysterical. Look around you, Sherlock. He's stealing secrets from the Crown, toying with navies, fomenting war. You cannot catch him alone. We will need all your brother's connections to stop this madman before he does worse. M thinks he can anticipate my decisions, and for now I shall let him believe it. But fear not, John. When opportunity strikes, so will I. This is not about you and your ego, Sherlock. There are other lives at risk. I am well aware, John, but Mycroft is not the answer. For the Crown, criminals like M are just as easily seen as assets or allies should their crimes align with one's political agenda. I will not involve my brother and risk this man walking free. I cannot allow it. You're fooling yourself, Sherlock. You think M doesn't have a folder on you and Mycroft? He's counting on you two not cooperating. It's obvious. I am simply ensuring that when M and I cross paths again, it will be on my terms. Neither his nor Mycroft's. That is how I will win. This is a mistake, and one day you'll pay for it. But I know you too well to argue any longer. M is gone. For now, 
Best to focus on the reason we came to Cordona in the first place. On that matter, you are probably right. But John, I need you on my side. I am on your side, Sherry. To make sure you don't get yourself killed. I appreciate it. Shall we? Hmm. 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 Hmm.